Welcome to Politics Unplugged. I'm Andrew Hugh, and it has been a busy week for politics and families, all of us talking about gun violence at schools. Thousands of students in Colorado and across the nation walked out of class in protest on Wednesday, demanding leaders in Washington take action to protect them at school. And we saw the emotions of our nation on full display in a nationally televised Florida town hall. Why do we have to be the ones to do this? Why do we have to speak out to the Capitol? Why do we have to march on Washington just to save innocent lives? That young man is one of many students pushing for solutions in the wake of the tragedy at his school. And he pressed for answers from Florida Senator Marco Rubio. And Rubio said progress is being made and empathize with the situation these survivors have been put in. You're absolutely right. And let me start by saying, and it goes without saying, that what you've lived through and what you live through it's not supposed to be a part of your high school experience. It's just not supposed to happen. Now, Rubio showed some support for some gun control measures, such as raising the age to buy rifles and limiting magazine sizes. The Republican senator also broke from President Trump by not supporting a plan to consider arming teachers. Now, the issue even led to boos for Colorado Representative Mike Kaufman at his own town hall at Cherry Creek High School. This was the reaction when the congressman suggested investigating why the FBI never followed up on tips about the Florida shooter. <laughs> One person asked if he would take legislation to get military-style weapons off the street, but Kaufman deflected. There's no question that no firearm, no matter what it is, should be in the hands of, uh, of somebody that's not a responsible gunner. Now I sat down with the congressman after that meeting and asked him about school safety. Congressman Kaufman, thank you so much for being here. I think gun violence in our schools sure. is top of mind for everybody right now. And I, in fact, I heard one of the Florida students say that the gunman in this case could buy a weapon, can't buy alcohol. Sure. Do you get his reasoning and what are you willing to do to keep our schools safe? Well, that's, that's, um, so I think they're, they're, from my perspective, there should be two issues under discussion. Okay. Uh, one issue should be uh, well, there's multiple issues that should be under discussion, but certainly when it comes to the possession of these firearms, uh, one is to say um, uh, who is a responsible gun owner, who, who shouldn't own it, this firearm or any firearm. And another one is the fact that under federal law today, uh, we say that you have to be 21 to be able to purchase a handgun. Uh, uh, f from a, a federal, federally uh, what, licensed uh, gun dealer, uh, but 18 to purchase what we call a long rifle. Well, there's obviously a lot of variations of long rifle, and so, so there's a question of can we pull back on that age? Does somebody who's 18 have the presence of mind uh, to purchase one of these firearms? And I, so I think that uh, that's a fair discussion. So are you willing to to effort that change to make I'm sure willing that to circle, I'm, will, I'm willing to certainly take a look at uh, both those options and, and to see are they both viable or is one, uh, one viable and one not. Uh, but uh, certainly what we want is uh, that, that uh, gun owners are, that are not responsible should not possess these firearms. My concern about young people today, and, and again, this is complex on how to address it, is that I just think that there's a, a popular subculture of violence uh, where it's, 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 I think that uh, in looking at some of these violent video games and other things, the people sub subscribe to that are seduced into these um, incredibly violent fantasies. Um, so we got to deal with it on one end uh, in terms of uh, who possesses uh, firearms. Uh, on, and remember, I think in the Virginia Tech, over 30 people were killed with a student with a handgun. On the other end, uh, obviously there's mental health and there's going to be pushback there as well on the civil rights side. But So there'll be a tension. So um, I know there's a lot of a lot of issues here at play and I think a lot of people are just pushing for action now. Are you willing pushing to Pushing for action now. And, and so one of the things that uh, I want to do right now is to sit down uh, with my school safety directors for the different con uh, school districts within my congressional district and say, what is it going to take in your view to have a safe school? Um, and so one thing besides looking at the mental health, looking at the gun safety side, I think we really need to look at um, school security 
in and of itself. So conversation is what you're talking about right now? Well, I have legislation that was introduced in March of, of last year that uh, provides federal grant funding to school districts. Uh, uh, obviously, they have to come up with money, too, uh, to uh, upgrade their security uh, at their school. So I think that's important. I, so I think, uh, but, but that's something we can do right now. Um, and, and that's something we do need to do right now. I know you get an A-plus from the NRA. You've directly received $34,000 in contributions. A Denver 7 viewer named Fern wants to know if you would be willing to give back that NRA money or stop taking uh, it. Well, I, I support any group uh, or, or, or certainly would take support from any group that supports a responsible gun ownership. I mean, they're going to have to make an assessment in terms of what I do uh, in terms of going forward, and they'll decide. Who's they? You mean they, uh, any, your any, constituents any or the NRA? Well, a lot of my constituents are uh, members of the, of the NRA. So uh, she's asking, would you be willing to stop taking NRA money? Well, that... Um, you know, I, I just think it's a it's a hypothetical question. Um, they're going to have to decide based on what I do whether or not they want to support what you're me. Saying. Okay. Um, we know that Russia interfered in our last presidential election, yet nothing seems to have changed, and we're uh, hitting November here fairly soon. What can you do to make sure that our right to vote is not interfered with? Well, I think Russia is going to continue. I think we have to assume that Russia is going to continue to to meddle in our elections. I think what they want to do is uh, try and destabilize our, our political system and, and create chaos and, and, and create uh, a lack of confidence in the outcome uh, by their intervention. What I've uh, co-sponsored is a bill called the Honest Ads Act. And what that does is it updates our campaign finance disclosure laws. Uh, right now, if, if uh, I'm an organization, I'm running an ad on, on Channel 7 uh, for or against the candidate, I have to disclose who I am. Right. Radio the same way. On the Internet, I don't. And so what, what this Honest Ads Act does is it updates our campaign finance disclosure laws and requires that same disclosure uh, for Internet ads that, that would be required for TV and radio. Some people, some states have suggested paper ballots. Do you think we should go to that? For those of us who go to the polls or want to cast a ballot, make sure that, that our right to vote is preserved? Well, we, we have a, a backup paper ballot here right. in the state of Colorado. I think that's important. Uh, is that something and, we should consider, given, uh, the, given the situation? Well, we should, we should, I think we have a, a backup paper ballot here, and yes, I think that that absolutely should be used, where we have a physical record that we can use on a recount uh, to be able to do that. Uh, and so I, I think that's something that, that we have right now in Colorado. We have another viewer from your 6th Congressional sure. District who wants to know, what are you going to do for DREAMers? There's a deadline here looming. Sure, March 5th uh, is a deadline. So um, the... I'm going to support legislation, but probably will be, I don't know if the president, you know, I don't think we're going to get all the president wants. Uh, obviously, my hope is that he wouldn't veto it. That we're, we, I think we have the votes to get border security and a version of the DREAM Act. A DREAM Act being legislation that would provide a, a path to citizenship for the, these DACA, DACA recipients based on uh, military service, based on education, based on work history. Where my backup is, is if we fail by March 5th, this deadline, where the administration has committed to rescind the renewal of these, these uh, mm -hmm. DACA um, permits, uh, is to push forward my Bridge Act. Uh, the Bridge Act is a three-year extension, a bipartisan three-year extension of, of the DACA, the, the protections right. under DACA, until Congress finds a permanent solution. Mm. Now, back in June, you tweeted out, the president's tweets are beneath the dignity of his office. It needs to stop. Hashtag stop the Twitter tantrums. Do you still feel that? I think, I think, he's, a, I think he's a little bit better. But I, I, you know, I think tweeting is a powerful tool for a president uh, to be able to reach the American people directly. I think sometimes he punches beneath himself uh, when he personally attacks individuals. Congressman Kaufman, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate you talking with us. We'll be thank right you. back.